This Elster tutorial in English shows how to submit a tax return in Germany for free using the Elster platform. In most cases, you as a German employee or even as a student have to submit a tax return every year. But the only option to do so for free is using Elster. As Elster is in German language, it can be frustrating for expats. Elster Online is also not self-explanatory, so I have created this Elster tutorial in English to help you easily complete your tax return in Germany. By the way, if you're new to the channel, my name is Essen, I'm a researcher and on this channel we discuss business, investing and personal finance in Germany. Let's get started. First, I will explain how to log into Elster Online. In order to use the free Elster platform, you have five options. However, the recommended option is generating a certificate first. For that, you have to register with Elster with your essential details. Then the finance arm or the tax office will send you activation data by email and by regular mail. The regular mail can take multiple days. So make sure that you register with Elster at least one month before the tax deadline. Once you get the activation data, you can generate a certificate file which can be used to log into the Elster platform. Now let's start directly in Elster Online and get an overview. On the home page, you can quickly create a new tax return or any other financial form, such as the VAT return, income and expenses statement, property tax return, and many more. I will start with a regular income tax return and select the year 2023. At the beginning, you can use a helpful feature that saves time. If you have already submitted a tax return using Elster Online, you can import data from the previous year, which will automatically fill in a large portion of your personal information in the new tax return. Do make sure and check if the data is still accurate. We will proceed without using this feature as if it's our first time creating a tax return. Now enter your name and at the bottom, decide if you want to use the next helpful feature, the attachment assistant. This is a function for those who are unsure about which forms and attachments they need. By answering some questions, you can determine the relevant forms. However, you can add or remove forms later on as well. If you're unsure about the contents of the different forms, you can click on the question mark for a brief explanation. Every tax return is based on the main form. And since there is a compulsory health insurance in Germany, the Forzoge Auf Fund attachment is always included. Here you enter the contributions to health, nursing and pension insurance. Then there are optional attachments such as skin attachment for child expenses, the attachment for deducting a portion of your rent and the Anlage N for employees to enter their salary and important deductions such as work related expenses. If you want to get the most out of your tax return, you can download my ebook for absolutely free. I'll put a link to that in the description below. Okay, now we will select these attachments for our tax return. You will need additional information for tax calculation, which I will show later on as well. Now we are going in the tax return for 2023. On the top, the whole process is marked. On the left, you have a navigation menu. You can click directly on the section you want to go to, but we will go through it step by step. We won't import data from our profile since we assume it's your first tax return. Instead, we will enter the tax number. This is not the same as the tax identification number. If you have filed a tax return in Germany before, you would have been assigned a tax number by the tax office. You can find it on your tax assessments. We will assume it's your first tax return. So we will apply for a new tax number and select the corresponding state and tax office. Next, we move to the page where personal and general information is required. Here, you enter your tax identification number, which can be found on your payslip or your tax statement. Then you enter your birth date and if applicable, the date of death. We will use the name as in finance as an example. You also need to provide an address. Let's say Stuttgart Strasse 1. You can enter your current occupation. In our example, we will write engineer. The next point is only relevant if there has been a change in your marital status in the tax year. In this case, 2023. Otherwise, you do not have to fill it out. It's important to indicate your religious affiliation for the program to consider it. You can select other if your religious affiliation is not provided. On the next page, you may see a second person displayed even if you are filing the tax return only for yourself. That's how the program is designed. If you want to file a joint tax return with your partner, 
you can provide their information here. For this Elster tutorial, we will only fill out the information for a single person. Next, we have the banking information. Here we provide the IBN number of where the finance arm should refund the money. The account can be yours or a third party. So make sure you provide the correct details. Also, it doesn't have to be a German IBN number, meaning that if you have moved out of Germany, you can still get the refund. On the next page, there are certain optional requests that you can make, such as applying for the employee saver allowance or income replacement benefits. In the income replacement benefits section, you would select the respective person in this case and enter the income replacement benefit, such as unemployment benefits, parental benefits, insolvency benefits or sickness benefits if applicable. You need to confirm by clicking the tick button. If you want to remove any entries, you can use the trash can button to delete them. Now let's go to the Anlage N, which is for reporting income from non-self-employment work. This is relevant for employees or students with a job subject to social security contributions. Select the Anlage N and start entering your income details. Here you would need the income tax certificate or the launch toy Bishanigo. You get this certificate from your employer, usually with the December or January payslip. It looks something like this. You should have it on hand for your tax filing because it makes things easier. First, let's enter your tax class. If you aren't sure, you can head over to my article on this topic. I'll put a link to that below the like button. Here, I'm going to add some details from a sample certificate in our example. Let's say the gross wages were, for example, 45,000 euros and the withheld income tax was 2,280 euros. It's possible that you might have a solidarity surcharge or church tax listed as well. So you would enter those details accordingly. For us, we leave that as it is and click continue. Next, there are a few special cases to consider. For example, pension benefits, taxable income and withheld taxes. All of those go on in here. Let's look at number five where the short time work allowance is included. You simply check your income tax certificate to see if anything is listed in the line 15. For us, it's not listed, but if it were, you would enter the short term work employment and the corresponding amount. Then click continue. Now let's move to the business expenses. This is where we show our expenses and reduce our tax burden. So we'll start with the commuting allowance. You can claim this for your daily commute to work. We need to create a work location and specify it as the first place of employment. Here we'll use a fictitious address for your work. You would enter the correct work location and choose the time period you committed there. Let's assume it's the entire year from 1st January to 31st December. If it was a shorter period for you, you would adjust it accordingly. You can later add additional work location as well as in case you moved your offices or changed employers. In our case, we had five working days per week on average with 30 vacation and 10 sick days. So in total, that would be 40. Let's make this number to 90, assuming that you also work from home. So we need to subtract those days from the total for the year. We also assume work from home. So we need to subtract those days from the total for that year. This person worked on site for 150 days. Here you can Google the total number of working days per year in your city to get the correct values. Now we need to enter the one-way distance in kilometers to your workplace. Let's say it's 10 kilometers. For each kilometer, you'll receive a certain amount in cents. For the year 2023, a rate of 30 cents per kilometer is given for one-way journey between home and work and 0.35 euros per kilometer for the 21st kilometer onward. We need to specify the mode of transportation, for example, private car or a cycle. The mode of transportation isn't crucial for the commuting allowance itself, but the program needs this information. There are certain maximum limits that you need to meet. If you use public transport, you would remove the 10 kilometers above and provide the details of your monthly and annual passes. For example, if they cost 600 euros, if you use the Deutschland ticket, these costs can be deducted without reduction. You can even add the distance if you ride a bike or walk to work. And there is no restriction if you add both the options. The Elster program and the tax office will determine which is better for you. Commuting allowance based on kilometers or the amount for the public transportation expenses. Then click transfer entry and it's in the system. If you need to edit it later, simply click the pencil icon. If you receive tax exempt allowances from your employer, you can enter them here. Now let's talk about work-related expenses. 
If you're getting value from this video, please hit the like button and consider subscribing. Moving to the home office daily allowance. Let's enter the amount. We need to determine if there's another workplace for your professional activities where you occasionally go or if this is the only one. If it's the only one, you enter the information below. But if you have another work location at your employer's premises, like in our case, you'll choose that option. Click confirm and we're done. On the next page, we can deduct further training costs as well as other expenses like job application cost or account management fees. These expenses are usually not questioned up to a limit of 16 euros. We can confirm these entries and move on. However, if you have higher expenses, then please add those details accordingly. Okay, now let's go and enter some advertising expenses such as membership fees for professional associations. In our case, let's say it's 500 euros. We confirm this entry and move to the next page. We have already filled out certain advertising expenses and now we can continue with the pension expenses. As an employee, we have contributed to the statutory pension insurance. We can find the relevant information in the line 23 of our income tax certificate, where it shows 3,021 euros. We also need to enter the employer's contributions, which are also going to be 3,021 euros. Next, we need to determine if we are insured under statutory or private health insurance. Let's enter the contributions to the statutory health insurance, which we can find in line 25 of our income tax certificate. In our example, it's 2515 euros. We also enter the nursing care insurance contribution, which can be found in line 26 of the income tax certificate. In our example, it's 759 euros. There is also the unemployment insurance, which can be found in line 27 of the income tax certificate. We enter the amount which is 290 euros. Additionally, if you support your parents and send remittance to them from Germany, you will need the Anlage Unterhalt as well. So to claim the support sent to parents, we are going to add a new document which is the Anlage Unterhalt. First, we provide the address of the household, then the country where the supported persons are living. Next, we provide how many people are living in that house. After that, we provide the details for the maintenance period. So from which day till which day was the support provided? In most cases, it's going to be from the 1st of January till the 31st of December. In the next option, we provide the first payment date and the last payment date. For example, when we claim support for the whole year, ideally we should send the first payment in the first few months of the year. After that, we write down how much money was sent, then accept the entry and proceed to the next page. Here we provide further details. If the maintenance payments were sent by the bank, we can add the details in number 13. If cash payments were done, then we write down those details in number 14. You can also fill out number 16 if that's applicable for you. In the number 20, you provide the details of your net monthly salary. On the next page, add the details of the person that is being supported. To do that, select the add person option. Here you provide their name, date of birth and their relation. Details about place of residence and their assets. You also have to give the details of the total value of the assets of the supported person. At the end, you have to mention yes to the claim that you have a maintenance declaration of needs confirmed by the home authority. On the next page, we provide specific details about the person being supported like their income from employment or if they have any other income from other sources. Additionally, if they have income coming from capital assets like stocks and ETFs, you can provide those details in point number 39. On the next page, you can add the details of the contributions of health and nursing care if applicable. Otherwise, you can leave those blank. If someone else is also providing support to this person, then you can add those details in this section. Otherwise, you can select no from the drop down menu and proceed forward. If you're supporting multiple people, you can add another person and fill out all of their details similar to how we just did them. Once you have added all of the persons being supported, you can select to take over the document. We can click on proofing. We can save the calculations and review the values. If there was an error, we can go back and make necessary corrections. However, in this case, we will proceed by clicking on upsend it and the tax return will be submitted. There is no need to print anything as the file will be automatically submitted to the finance office. And now you are done. If you realized at the end before submitting the tax return that you need to provide additional information or attach a document, you can add or remove attachments at any time. You can do this by selecting all login hinsufigen or end funding at the bottom left. If you need a specific form for your tax return, you can select it from here. For example, 
if you have made stocks and ETF investments, the Anlage Ka Ape. For crypto investments, you are going to need Anlage SO. So this was the Elster tutorial in English on how to submit a tax return in Germany for free using Elster. In this Elster tutorial, I have focused on the essential features and functions to keep this video concise. If you want me to make a specific video to cover additional topics on Elster, like how to submit crypto taxes in Germany using Elster, or perhaps how to fill out the Anlage Ka Ape for your stock investments. If I get enough comments, I'll make a specific video on that pretty soon. That said, there are certain rules that you need to know before you can claim remittance sent to your family, which I have discussed in this video. And if you are interested in further guides on using Elster, you can watch this video. So thanks for watching Blybizon and I'll see you in either of these two videos.